boy, oh boy, this marks the day officially that internal combustion cars are irrelevant. I know that sounds kind of extreme, but let's be real. The future of motorsport, even according, even according to some of the motorsport drivers that I spoke to at the supercar races here in Australia, they admit the future of motorsport is electric. It's just too much better. It's just so much better. It's so much faster. The new BYD supercar has officially broken the world speed record. And it could have gone faster, except the straight was, well, not, not getting so straight anymore. There was a corner coming up. It's beaten the Bugatti Chiron, which costs, I believe, about 20 times more. 20 times more. And it's also broken the record at the Nürburgring for a production electric car with a very fast time that I think could be even faster if BYD were to focus more on the Nürburgring. Clearly, they've gone there, just done the race really quickly and then taken off. This time is incredible, though. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Intriguingly, the same day that this news came out, BYD's supercar is now the fastest vehicle production in history. The same exact day, Berkshire Hathaway dumped all of their stock in BYD. So Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway were like, no, no, we're done with BYD. Kind of interesting considering I think, I think actually BYD is undervalued right now. I think I honestly think that Berkshire Hathaway sold at a lower price than what they could have gotten, significantly lower if they were to wait a few months. But I could be wrong. And, um, you know, they've got a much better track record of investing than I do, that's for sure. So let's have a look at this car, guys. Now, this is the most powerful electric car you can buy in the world. It has 2,978 horsepower. I mean, it's 22 horsepower short of 3,000 horsepower has more than twice as much power as the standard BYD Yangwang supercar. And at 308.4 miles an hour, it beat this Bugatti Chiron Supersport 300 plus. So for the first time in history, an electric car is the fastest vehicle ever. Not just in terms of acceleration. I mean, we know that EVs can destroy internal combustion cars when it comes to zero to 100 or quarter mile times. We've never seen this before, though, in terms of top end speed. BYD's Yangwang Supercar, the U9 Track Edition, set an electric car top speed record and an internal car combustion engine top speed record. I mean, it's just a top speed record, period. It reached 308.4 miles an hour. That is 496.22 kilometers. Just an extra 3.8 or 3.78 kilometers per hour. And it would have hit 500 kilometers an hour, which would be a pretty cool figure. I reckon BYD might actually go for that 500. The VMAX was achieved at the ATB Papenberg High Speed Oval in Germany with Mark Basseng behind the wheel. Uh, you can see there's a video here from BYD. However, there's one problem. Because the speed record was done in only one direction, SSC's Tutara is still the official two-way average title holder at 282.9 miles an hour. That's 453. To be honest, one way I think um, is legit enough. I mean, considering it went 41 kilometers an hour faster than the SSC Tutara, uh, you know, it's, um, it's a big difference. Here's the thing. For a Chinese EV to beat the Bugatti Chiron Supersport 300 plus, we don't know exactly what the price of the U9 Extreme is, but we estimate probably about 400,000 to 500,000 US dollars, meaning you could buy a lot of those for the price of one single Bugatti Chiron Supersport 300 plus. That said, there's not that many that are going to be going on sale. BYD is only planning on making 40 of them. I'm going to, going to guess they'll probably sell out of those 40 really, really quickly. Rematch, right? They're an electric supercar manufacturer located in Croatia. They made what was previously known as the world's fastest electric car. Clearly, it's not anymore. But they have complained that they can't sell enough supercars. 
could be the difference in price, right? That's 7 million US dollars. This is going to be closer to, well, going to be less than 500,000. So the Yangwang U9 Extreme, it's got some pretty extreme stuff. For one, it's got four electric motors. It produces 2,978 horsepower. That is more than double the 1,288 horsepower of the regular U9. It's the first production electric vehicle to have a 1,200 volt platform. And there's a lot of speculation the BOD is not using the existing blade battery. It's either using a more advanced, the new blade battery version 2, or it's using an NMC battery. We don't actually know, but it hasn't disclosed this information. But there is the reason the speculation behind that is just because this thing is so powerful that using an 80 kilowatt hour battery, which is what it has, and if it was using an 80 kilowatt hour blade battery, you'd think that that battery would not last very long, right, at these kind of speeds. And to be fair, internal combustion cars running these kinds of speeds, their fuel tanks run out in like nine minutes really fast. I believe that's how long the Chiron Supersport has on a track going over 400 kilometers an hour, nine minutes. So no car will last very long, whether it's internal combustion or EV, when it's driving at those kinds of speeds. Now, we also know it's got brakes, awesome brakes. It's got carbon ceramic massive, I believe the biggest carbon ceramic brakes ever fitted to a production performance car. And I'm going to guess the BMW is probably already sold out. I mean, if you're only making 40 of them, and they are, they are available worldwide, so you can buy these outside of China, which is pretty cool. But I'm going to guess only 40 of them, and they're going to sell out really fast. There is a clip showing the inside of the car as it's on its way to hitting the record top speed. The driver drove around the sloped curve of the oval at 186 miles an hour. That's 300 kilometers an hour. So he's coming around the corner at 300 kilometers an hour, and as soon as he gets around that corner, then he you know, pushes his foot down all the way. And clearly you can see the car gets up to 280 miles an hour really quickly. That's 450 kilometers an hour. Then it hits 292 miles an hour, 470 kilometers an hour really quickly as well. And it gets to 308 miles an hour or 496.2. To be honest, it looked like it had more power. It looked like it had more to go. But um, the truth is that it started actually kind of getting a bit unsteady, kind of moving around. The car was moving around a bit and the straight was ending. So they had to slow it down. As you can see, the driver had to lift off the throttle and hit the brakes as the, the car did start to drift towards the left-hand barrier, which was next to the track. And this is a very heavy car. The Bugatti Chiron Supersport 300 Plus is also extremely heavy, but this weighs around 2,500 kilos. So it's that's probably going to actually help it with high-speed stability. Normally with a performance car, you think extra weight's a negative, but in this situation, it's probably actually a positive. I think BWD needs to potentially tweak the aerodynamics of this vehicle in order to go faster though that's probably the one thing holding it back just at this kinds of speeds you get a bit of the wrong wind and you're flying up in the air remember mark weber he was driving that mercedes that mercedes test car and his car flew up in the air and did about 10 flips in the air and it, it wasn't really even going that quickly but that's how aerodynamics can penalize you in an extreme situation bbd then lapped the nurberg ring the most famous racetrack in the world which is, I believe, 21 kilometers long in six minutes and 59 seconds. That's nearly as fast as the fastest internal combustion cars, not far off it. Three seconds slower than the Mustang GTD, uh, the new Ford supercar, which is intended for track racing. And that means it beat the Xiaomi Su7 Ultra that lapped the track in 704957. So it actually beat the Su7 Ultra by nearly six seconds, which is an amazing result. But kind of does make the Su7 Ultra, it does make it seem even better, to be honest, than what I originally thought, because the Su7 Ultra is a five-seat family car. The fact that it was only, what, 5.8 seconds, or 5.7 seconds slower around the Nürburgring than this incredible supercar from BYD, this kind of says some amazing stuff about Xiaomi's engineers, that they're able to go that quick in a five-seat family sedan. Guys, EVs are really getting exciting and I, I personally, I'm all here for it because internal combustion cars, they're just, nothing's changing. It's all sort of staying the same, same. There's little changes every year, but not much. EVs though, everything is changing. Performance, speed, charging times, 
battery energy density, battery lifespans, prices coming down. I mean, it's absolutely unreal. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. The Sydney EV International Motor Show. If you wanna get a 50% discount on your tickets, all you gotta do, click the link in the description and use the promotion code that's in the description. Just copy and paste that. Now I should mention there's only 200 tickets available per day. So if you go to use the promo code and you can't get a ticket, wait till the next day. Don't wait until the day before the show to get your tickets because otherwise you'll probably miss out on getting the 50% discount.